Welcome to Couch Base Coding with Matthew Groves. This is a 10 minute slice of my day as a developer advocate, live every day. Check out the old episodes on YouTube and please email me or tweet me your comments, questions, suggestions. I'd love to hear from you. Today's music in the waiting room is called Longing for Tumbleweeds by Admiral Bob. Nice little spaghetti western type of uh, sound to it. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to continue asking Google, or actually letting Google ask me questions and try to answer them, just to see what people are out there looking for, their burning questions. This is kind of one of the things a developer advocate does, is trying to figure out what people having questions about, what are they struggling with, how can I help them, and so we're going to let Google try to aggregate some of that stuff for us. So uh, yeah, last week I did some couch-based how-to stuff, so this week I'm going to do some... Uh, different keywords. So let's start with uh, NoSQL. That's a keyword people like to use. Um, I have some I have some issues with NoSQL as a keyword, but we'll leave that for another day. And let's just start with a question like how many? Uh, okay, so how many NoSQL databases? How many NoSQL databases are there? What a question. Um, I don't think I can literally answer this with an exact number. But what I can do is point you to a handy website, db-engines.com. And if you're into databases, you've probably heard of this before. If you're not into databases, this might be a useful tool for you to help learn more about databases that are out there. Um, this is not a site run by Couchbase, but I mean, we're one of the featured databases on there. This is run by uh, somebody else. And uh, one of the things they do on the site is they try to have a lot of information about a lot of facts about uh, databases of all kinds, not just NoSQL, but all kinds of databases. And one of the things I like to look at uh, on a regular basis is this DB Engines ranking. This is a pretty cool list of databases, and it's ordered by this DB Engines uh, popularity score out here, this uh, first column here. And let's just look at that score really quickly. So they, they say how they calculate it. There, I mean, there's some things that I don't think are... Like it's not an equation or, or an API you can use or modify, but uh, this is basically what they go by. They go by a number of results on, on these popular search engines, Google, Bing, and Yandex. And they go by Google Trends as well. And number of questions on Stack Overflow. And then DBA Stack Exchange, which isn't uh, nearly as popular as Stack Overflow, but it is specific to DBAs, so that's kind of useful. Number of job offers on specifically Indeed and Simply Hired, so those two job sites. And then number of profiles, which mention the database. So if you say, oh, I have skill with so-and-so, so database, like I have Couchbase on mine, that's going to count towards the score on LinkedIn and Upwork, which I'm not familiar with, but probably similar to LinkedIn. And then uh, social networks. So they count just tweets. They look on Twitter and they say, did you tweet about Couchbase? Then it's going to count towards the Couchbase score. So that's good. I think you have to use a hashtag. So hashtag Couchbase for that. All right. So then using that, they come up with a score. And, and this, is a, this is a popularity score. It's a rough guideline to, you know, what people are talking about out there. They may not, this may not be the score that you'd want to use to determine which database to use. But it gives you an idea of, of what people are talking about. Just for instance, Microsoft Access. Perfectly good database tool for what it is, uh, like a desktop database. But this is not the database that I would want to use uh, for something like, um, you know, some of these other databases down here that have a lower score, right? But uh, they do things, certain things better than Microsoft Access, right? I wouldn't use, for instance, uh, Elasticsearch is a, a good text-based uh, search tool and, and Couchbase has a connector for Elastic. I wouldn't use Access as my text-based uh, search store database, even though it's more popular than Elastic. So with that in mind, uh, this list is extensible. Uh, 304, well, there's a lot of them tied for last place, 304. So we're looking at 300 plus databases that DB Engines just knows about, right? And I'm sure down at the bottom of this list, let me know if you've heard of any of these databases. Um, leave, a, leave a comment or, or tweet me if you've heard of any of these at the very bottom of the list, because that would be something I'd be interested in knowing. But uh, up here at the top, we're generally going to... Let me zoom out a little bit, see if we can get more on the screen here. We're generally going to be focusing on you know these databases that are probably in at least double digits or more and start to get into you know uh, enough uh, momentum to be interesting. 
Uh, but you can see this is indexing all of them, right? Relational, document, which is what Couchbase is, search engine, key value store. Uh, in fact, over here on the left side, you can see all the different types of databases that they've categorized. And there may be other databases besides these. But if we click on document, because Couchbase is a document database, we can see that, yeah, we're in the uh, easily the top three. We're sort of, uh, you know, neck and neck with uh, DynamoDB for like second place in document database world. And uh, Mongo's up there at the top. CouchDB is still on the list that's been around for, for a while. And uh, Microsoft's newer offering, Cosmos, has been shooting up the charts recently as well. And there's some more interesting ones on here if we get down the list farther that are of note. Um, but document database, we're looking at around, oh, uh, looks like we're pushing 40 plus different databases there. There's, some, uh, there's a bunch tied for last place. Uh, so if your question is how many document databases are there, it's about 40, 40 ish or so. Uh, relational, um, there's a lot of those. Relational has been around for a while, looking at 150 ish of those, but that's not NoSQL. Key value is often considered NoSQL, and uh, there's maybe 60 or so of these. Uh, some of these are some of these are good caching tools generally these days. You don't I don't see a lot of except for Dynamo, which is a multi-model. A lot of these are really, um, you know, they're they're really caching focused, right? They're they're not so much persistence focused. At least in, in my experience, people I've talked to, uh, we already talked about document graph is an interesting kind of database. There's not a lot of these. Uh, looks like maybe 30 or so. Some really interesting use cases with this. With GraphDB, time series is another one. What else? Wide column is typically one I will look at as well. Not many wide columns at all. So we're looking at uh, 11 total there. And um, yeah, basically those first three are the only ones I've even heard of. Uh, I guess table storage you can consider a wide column as well, a big table. Um, so there you go. So those are the those are the sort of the top four NoSQL like key value, document, graph, and uh, wide column. There's some other ones as well. Search engines. We mentioned Elastic already. Um, so, uh, sort of the the one of the implied questions here is, you know, which one should I use? And and that's something I basically spend a lot of my job talking about, like why you should consider using Couchbase. Uh, and one of the most compelling reasons is you look at all these databases up here, DB Engine's ranking, and all these databases, you know, they all probably do some something really well. Right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be getting you know, this sort of score up here. So they all do something really well. Microsoft Access, for instance, very popular. It's a very useful desktop database for that type of thing. That's why it's got a popular score. Um, you, know, you have a key value stores that are good for caching. And you have uh, Elasticsearch and, and other databases that are good for searching and things like that. So this kind of brings me to, to Couchbase and why I think it's worth your attention. Uh, and any one of these reasons is really a good reason to check out Couchbase. But uh, Couchbase has a memory-first architecture, so it's great for those caching use cases, those, those key value or anything you need to cache use case. But also has durable disk storage. It can be saved to asynchronously. Uh, so it's memory-first, stored to disk later, and can be replicated to you know uh, a horizontal cluster. Uh, you're storing JSON data, so it's, it's a document database. You can do a full-text search with Couchbase. It's built right in. You don't have to do... Uh, any sort of ETL. You, you can use our Elastic connector. If you if you like to use Elasticsearch, you can connect Couchbase to Elastic, but you can also use full text search built right in. It's 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 our own search engine, by the way. It's well our own. I say it's the open source project believe built into Couchbase. Uh, Couchbase has a mobile database and it can be synchronized with Couchbase server. Uh, that synchronization is huge. You don't have to worry about spending months and months trying to get synchronization to work on your own. It's just built right in. And you can run SQL queries in Couchbase. So all these things you get in one data platform. So I think it's definitely worth checking out. And not to mention, if you're interested in analytics, we've got an analytics uh, service that's currently in developer preview to run those complex reports and analytical stuff. Uh, eventing is a new feature in Couchbase. You can uh, have some functions that are running that do some activity on the server side, get closer to your data. Cross data center replication, so you can Easily sync data between data centers, between the cloud and the data center, between clouds, etc. So I know this kind of sounds like a commercial, but this is the YouTube, this is the Couchbase YouTube channel. Couchbase has all these things in one platform, which I think makes it very compelling uh, to to check out Couchbase. 
because you may start out by using it just for caching or just for session store, but you can certainly expand on that same platform to full text search or to more complex SQL queries or some sort of reporting or replication, all those things in one platform. You don't need to bring in a dozen different tools to do all those things. You can do it in one single platform. So anyway, that's uh, my answer to the question, how many d databases are there? Well, there's lots, but with Couchbase, you can do the work of several different NoSQL databases in one single platform. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll keep asking Google to give us some more questions, and it'll be around 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.